All right, Joey Jones is a retired United States Marine and a Fox News contributor. Joey, I wanted to have you on when I was reading that poll because I know you love America, but I want to know what do you think is driving these numbers where people aren't proud of our country? Man, that monologue, let me tell you, I'm, I'm hyped over here. I didn't know how to feel about this, but now that you've spoken, uh, I've collected my thoughts. I understand it, though. When you, when you look at the two groups of people we have in this country that are loudest right now, you have the progressives on the left, and their ideas are rooted in not just victimhood, but grievance. You know, they believe that our prosperity is a derivative of oppression, centuries yeah. of it, that they feel has never left. And then you look over to the right, and they see corporations bending to the woke mob. They see what they see as CRT. They see all these types of ways that our culture and what they believe to be what made this country prosperous being attacked. Conservatism is rooted in responsibility, and they see that being... Uh, abdicated all along the way, from absent fathers to the grievance culture of wokeism. And so you have two groups of people who are highly passionate, and one's no more proud than the other right now, and we do have a media and political class that prey on that and exacerbate it. That's why I love that monologue so much. But listen, there's an exercise in, at the beginning of woke culture that started to creep into schools and colleges, and they put everyone on a line. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, if you're, both your parents uh, were at home, take a step forward. If you're white, take a step forward. And the idea was that if you had privilege, you were up here. What if you took people from countries around the world, put them on the line, and ask questions like, if you have a bill of rights, take a step forward. If you had running water and electricity, take a step forward. If you had internet connectivity, take a step forward. If you had at least one big meal a day, take a step forward. Basic things that we as Americans never, hardly ever question. And think about the gap between us and most everyone else that could stand on that line. It's a, it's a really good point. And as I think of you, you left part of your body overseas. And news just came out that every branch of the U.S. military is having trouble with their recruiting numbers. So if you teach your kids to hate their country, why are you going to get children to actually volunteer for a military force where they can make the ultimate sacrifice? This almost seems like a, it's a national security risk. Listen, I was talking to a buddy the other day, and, and I don't want to go to all of it, but he said, man, we're, we're raising a generation of weak men and pissed off women. And, uh, and I said, well, first of all, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, well, listen, when we talk about this recruiting problem, he's, he's my Marine Corps mentor, and that's what he was mm -hmm. talking about, the people that would come to him in his recruiting. But what he would say is basically, this isn't just a problem of want to. A third of everyone trying to join the military can't, they can't qualify. Basic physical fitness, mm -hmm. uh, rap sheet, tattoos across their forehead, we have, such, we have this young generation of Americans who have all the opportunity in the world, and I still believe in them. I've got a 13-year-old son, but they are getting attacked from all angles, that masculinity is wrong, that's and right. that they're oppressed, and that's where those two groups of people come from, that the idea that men are getting weaker and women are just getting mad about it. it it's true, because you're getting hit from all angles, this messaging that, that not only is your country not good enough, but you're not good enough because you're a white male or whatever it may be. I got to tell you what, I have a, a young man that's very close to me. He is buff. He is strong. He loves America. He wants to join the military. And he was going to join until they had the vaccine mandate. And he said, you know what? I, I'm young and I'm healthy. I don't want to take the vaccine. I'm not going to join. He's going to go a different path. He loses and the military loses for a young man not joining. Who wants to serve? 40,000 National Guardsmen may have to hang up their uniform and force out the military over this. It's ridiculous. You tell me, Sean, what is more harmful to us, our ability to fight for our freedom, coronavirus or not having the military to yeah, fight it for us? 100 percent. I got to let you go in a second. But tell me what America means to you, the 4th of July means to you. It's a real simple, real simple, Sean. When you thank me for my service, I say back to you, thank you for being a country worth fighting for. Everything I left on the battlefield was absolutely worth it because this is a country we can sit here and have this conversation. I, I tried to quote you in a podcast with my wife where I heard you say that uh, be thankful by being American, an, an American that was worth dying for absolutely. or sacrificing for. I love that quote that you gave. I think it was on Fox and Friends. Joy Jones. Thanks for joining me. Happy Fourth of July. Thank you. Love the monologue. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.